അഭിജിത്ത് ഉണ്ടോ ും <laughs> Thank you, Arya. Uh, I hope I am audible to all of you. Now, I have uh, prepared a small slide as usual. Uh, let me share the slide with you. So in the last class, we were discussing about the aspect of asylum seekers. Now, uh, we are moving on to uh, the concept of refugees. Uh, so i will be going back to what we have discussed in our previous class with regard to asylum seekers because uh, we have to differentiate between uh, the asylum seeker the refugee and an immigrant okay that is very important these are three different uh, group of people uh, apologies everyone uh, i lost my internet connection in between so let me start the presentation one minute i'm trying to select the uh, i hope uh, the slide is visible to all of you can anyone confirm Yes, sir. Visible. Okay. Now, uh, yes. Let me start the slide presentation. So, refugees. So, we were uh, going through uh, the law of war, okay? Kindly keep in mind that uh, in your LLB syllabus, uh, you will be uh, mostly focusing on law of peace now uh, the uh, the aspect of asylum seekers uh, refugees uh, then uh, uh, the the protection of uh, prisoners of war all these aspects are covered under uh, law of war okay so there is a law of peace uh, international law can be divided into law of peace and law of war okay so law of war are those laws which are applicable are uh, applicable when countries are engaged in warfare so the aspect of asylum seekers refugees all these uh, are covered under uh, the context of conflict okay so basically uh, in the previous class we have looked at uh, asylum seekers now we are going into refugees and i believe most of you may be having an understanding of who is a refugee now 
uh, we we you might have read in newspaper articles uh, in our day to day uh, life uh, in some country far away from india or or near to india uh, people fleeing from their own country uh, and uh, seeking refuge in india or any other part of the world you might have uh, uh, read it in in the news articles uh, whether it is the people fleeing uh, the whether it is the ukrainian uh, civilians fleeing from ukraine uh, war with russia or the rohingya muslims uh, fleeing uh, uh, their homeland in uh, cambodia uh, or whether the ca- that is the case of uh, tibetans uh, fleeing from tibet to india and many other parts of the world there is also uh, the case of uh, you know sikh refugees uh, refu- uh, uh, sikh uh, people of sikh community who became a refugee uh, uh, who fled from india to uh, western countries during the sikh riots also many instances are there in in, in, in history as well as in the contemporary uh, world where we hear people f- fleeing from conflict uh, seeking protection uh, from their own uh, people from their own land in for uh, coming to foreign countries and seeking protection so uh, what how uh, did it ha- uh, came to be under what context a person can be defined as a refugee what is the legal uh, principle behind behind this Uh, what is the legal uh, international legal provisions that are uh, there uh, that defines and articulates who is a refugee and who is not a refugee what is the difference between a refugee and an asylum seeker what is the difference between an asylum seeker and a migrant uh, uh, immigrant or a migrant um, so uh, first of all let us see who is a refugee in order to understand who is a refugee you have to go into the convention relating to the status of refugees or or otherwise known as the refugee convention which it came into force on 1951 so this particular convention was ratified initially ratified by uh, european countries uh, western countries after the end of uh, second world war as you know uh, during a war a uh, lot of people get uh, di- displaced lot of people get uh, displaced from their own homeland and uh, 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 or uh, they try to flee their own country in order to protect their uh, pro- uh, own uh, fa- family members uh, their own life and seek refuge in other countries so this happened uh, during the second world war especially with regard to jews uh, jews were fleeing from Uh, persecution by uh, nazi germany and uh, its allied forces uh, it is a classical example of a refugee situation so uh, other than jews there were there were many uh, people uh, such as the polish uh, Rom- romania people uh, uh, other minority communities who were uh, you know uh, persecuted tortured during the second world war Uh, in order to take account for, account of all these individuals uh, who suffered uh, violence uh, uh, specific uh, persecution human rights violations during the second world war this particular convention was drafted that is the 1951 convention and the majority of the parties uh, majority of the states who uh, became party to the convention were initially european countries uh, so uh, this uh, the scope of the refugee convention 1951 was further expanded through the uh, refugee uh, protocol uh, 1969 okay i will be coming to the refugee uh, protocol of refugee convention uh, 1969 a, a protocol as you know it is a procedural law uh, a convention is usually a substantive law and uh, the uh, procedural law as to how a convention should be implemented uh, most probably it is articulated within a p- protocol so a protocol was framed in 1969 uh, around in the 1960s uh, which expanded the scope of the refugee convention initially in 
uh, the refugee convention was only applicable to the European countries uh, uh, who participated, uh, who, who started or initiated the Second World War. Uh, and it was initially understood that uh, subsequent to the end of the Second World War, there was numerous uh, local conflict, uh, regional conflict that manifested in, in the 1960s, 1970s. So there was an understanding among the international community that uh, the scope of the refugee convention should uh, go beyond the European continent and it has to include many other uh, non-European countries. So the, uh, the protocol was introduced in 1969. Uh, basically the protocol amended the uh, geographical uh, limits, uh, limits of uh, the refugee convention 1951 uh, and expanded it, it to include uh, non-European countries. So through the protocol, non-European countries can also accede uh, to the uh, principles of the refugee convention. Okay. So uh, kindly keep in mind, uh, prior to the drafting of the refugee convention 1951, it is it is it was recognized as a international customary law. Okay. So uh, in our previous classes, in the uh, in the first class that we had, we studied about the sources of, sources of international law, different different sources of international law and we studied that uh, international customary law is say uh, what is one of the primary sources of uh, international law and it is also one of the uh, most ancient form of international law okay so we, all the international conventions that uh, that that has been codified at, so far they existed in uh, most of them existed as international customary practices okay so in other words even if a country is not a party to the uh, 1951 refugee convention uh, example india india is not a party unfortunately india has not ratified the refugee convention 1951 even though that is the case uh, the countries like india who have not ratified the refugee convention they also have to follow the principles of uh, principles of international law contained within the refugee convention because it is part of international customary law. So, uh, according to the refugee convention, who is, a, who is a refugee? Okay, that is defined under Article 1A uh, Clause 2 of the refugee convention 1951. And it says that a person, uh, in, order, in order for a person to be recognized as a refugee, he must be, he must be having some fear of being persecuted if he or she returns to his country of origin or habitual residence. Okay. A refugee is a person who has some fear of harm or violence or threat to his life, his or her life, if that particular person returns to his own country or, or place of habitual residence. And uh, another condition that is given in Article 1A uh, Clause 2 of the Refugee Convention is that uh, the fear of persecution must be grounded on race, religion, nationality, membership to a particular social group or political uh, opinion. Okay. The, why that particular, uh, particular person who is, uh, uh, who is qualified as a refugee uh, is fearing uh, uh, for his, his or her life. Uh, that fear is manifested uh, because of uh, race, religion, nationality, or his or her membership to a particular social group, or uh, he or she has a particular political opinion that that is prohibited or uh, punished within the within his or her country. Okay, so they, these countries, the, the 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 grounds under under which persecutions are made against uh, individuals within their own country, uh, which makes them flee from their country or flee from their place of habitual residence, is known as the causal link. Okay, these grounds are known as the causal link uh, for making a person a refugee under international law so these grounds should be there okay the the fear of life fear of uh, or threat to life 
must originate because there uh, he is he or she belongs to a particular race religion nationality or a particular social group okay so in order to claim the status of refugee that he or she has to successfully escape from uh, the uh, territory of his or her own country or the place of habitual residence okay you must succeed in escaping from your own country physically okay you should physically succeed in escaping from your own country and you should manage to land in the territory of another foreign country to claim the benefit of a refugee okay that is another condition not only that you have to satisfy all these four uh, grounds that i have mentioned you have to succeed in uh, escaping physically escaping from the territory of the country from which you are uh, seeking to escape okay so uh, in addition to that um, uh, once the person has arrived in the territory of a foreign country he or she is unable or unwilling to avail uh, herself or himself uh, uh, to go back or return to that particular country okay once he or she reaches a foreign country uh, uh, to uh, uh, avail protection from uh, his, or, his or her own uh, national uh, country or his or her own government uh, uh, and uh, she he or she is not willing to go back okay continuously he, he or she is not willing to go back because the threat still continues okay that should be there uh, the mental perception or of, of the threat still continues even after reaching the foreign territory okay the final condition is he or she is not explicitly excluded from refugee protection or whose refugee status has not ceased because of a uh, change of circumstances okay in other words there is no change in uh, uh, you know uh, in the circumstances which caused her to her or him to uh, um, you know escape from his or uh, her own country to seek refugee status okay either she um, he or she uh, per uh, mentally perceives that uh, the threat is still continuing or the, there is uh, there is no change in circumstances in the country uh, in the in the country uh, uh, from which the person is escaping and uh, that uh, or uh, the uh, threat to uh, life still continues within that country okay um, uh, that, that is the uh, the sec final point is the, there is no change in the circumstances within the country in question uh the second last point is there is a mental perception within uh, within the mind of that individual that a threat still continues even after reaching the foreign country okay so when all these conditions are satisfied uh, a person can be considered as a refugee okay i hope you understood so these are the parameters uh, provided under article 1 capital a clause 2 of the refugee convention 1951 which uh, qualifies an individual as a refugee okay i hope uh, there is no doubt uh, or questions with regard to this point uh, can i move ah oh, yeah ah yes sir we in sri lanka in varuna korche vere avare namaku refugee aayittu consider cheyam avu ee parayna ground vecha pattilla അതായത് ശ്രീലങ്കയിൽ നിന്ന് വരുന്ന ആരാ ആരാന്ന് പറയുന്നത് ശ്രീലങ്കയിൽ നിന്ന് വരുന്ന ഡിസ്റ്റർബൻസ് കൊണ്ട് അവര് ഇന്ത്യയിലേക്ക് വരുന്നു അപ്പൊ അങ്ങനെ വരുമ്പോൾ ഈ ഗ്രൗണ്ട് കൊണ്ട് അവര് റെഫ്യൂജി ആക്കാൻ പറ്റും അത് പറ്റത്തില്ല ഞാൻ ഇല്ല പറ്റത്തില്ല പറ്റത്തില്ല അൺഫോർച്യുനേറ്റ്ലി പറ്റത്തില്ല അതെന്ന് പറഞ്ഞാല് ശ്രീലങ്കയിൽ ഇപ്പം നടക്കുന്ന അത് ഒരു എക്കണോമിക് ക്രൈസിസ് ആണ് ഓക്കെ ഈ എക്കണോമിക് ക്രൈസിന്റെ പ്രത്യേകത എന്താണെന്ന് വെച്ചാല് it does not cause any direct harm to life okay economic uh, instability karanam oru vyaktiyude life ne direct aayittu oru harm varunnundo illa ennallana avarthe question and the answer is no unlike war unlike uh, a, a civil war unlike uh, an international war unlike a regional war 
unlike uh, religious persecution where the person and property of an individual is in direct threat okay manslanunda e economic crisis ipo sri lankayil nadakkuna economic crisis does not constitute a direct threat to life indirect a threat to life aanu and that it is a threat to life in the long run pashche nammal ee ukraine nadakkuna ee ukraine russia war edukkayanengile it it is a direct threat to life okay you are uh, you have a direct threat to your own life and personal property you have a direct threat to your own fundamental rights sri lankayil nadana civil war between the Tam- tamils and uh, sri lankan uh, native uh, uh, sri lankan uh, si- singhalese avaya uh, between the tamil speaking uh, c- civil uh, citizen, uh, civilians of sri lanka and the singhali speaking uh, civilians of uh, sri lanka avaru tamil oru civil war undayirun aa civil war la endha sambhavikkunnu there is a direct threat to life and property so whenever there is a direct threat that is the condition we have to satisfy uh, uh in the refugee convention okay uh, that the direct perception of threat uh, it it is mentioned in the convention that is the ground within the ground itself e ground e uh, article 1 close ca- uh, article 1 capital a close to ile parnirikkina ground ile economic ennu parayna economic calamity ennu parayna oru ground alla for seeking uh, refugee status uh, if you noticed ഈ പറയുന്ന ഇവിടെ പറഞ്ഞിരിക്കുന്ന ഗ്രൗണ്ടുകളെല്ലാം ഒരു സിവിൽ വാറോ അല്ലെങ്കിൽ ഒരു ഇന്റർനാഷണൽ വാറോ നടക്കാനുള്ള ഗ്രൗണ്ടുകളാണ് ഇവിടെ മെൻഷൻ ചെയ്തിരിക്കുന്നത് അതേസമയം എക്കണോമിക്സ് എക്കണോമിക് കൊളാപ്സ് ഒരു ഗ്രൗണ്ട് ആയിട്ട് ഇതിനകത്ത് പറഞ്ഞിട്ടില്ല മീനിങ് ഡ്യൂറിംഗ് എൻ എക്കണോമിക് ക്രൈസിസ് യു കെ നോട്ട് ക്ലെയിം എസ് എ റെഫ്യൂജി യു വിൽ ബിക്കം എ മൈഗ്രന്റ് ഡ്യൂറിംഗ് എ റെഫ്യൂജി ക്രൈസ് അല്ല എക്കണോമിക് ക്രൈസിസ് എ പേഴ്സൺ ഹു ഇസ് ഫ്ലീയിങ് ഫ്രം എൻ എക്കണോമിക് ക്രൈസിസ് ഹി ഈസ് ക്ലാസിഫൈഡ് ആസ് എ migrant okay migrant aitana consider cheyidirikkana a migrant is a person who is coming to a foreign country for uh, economic opportunities better economic opportunities economic opportunities like better employment better uh, opportunity for education uh, better social services etc uh, that is the difference between a migrant and a refugee okay uh, so any person who is trying to escape from the economic crisis in sri lanka by going into a foreign country he is considered as a migrant and he is not a refugee okay now uh, i hope i have clarified that doubt uh, now you have understood that uh, uh, the difference between the migrant and a refugee what is the difference between an asylum seeker and a refugee there is a very narrow difference between an asylum seeker and a refugee okay uh, asylum seeker is a person i have as i have mentioned uh, in the previous class he uh, asylum seekers usually avare political persecution in the reshavadan samikina aalkar aayirikkum asylum seekers majority of the asylum seekers are individuals who are trying to escape from political persecutions political persecutions may be based on political ideology Dif- difference of opinion uh, with regard to political ideology ah uh, if, if a person is persecuted for his uh, difference in political ideology uh, he is uh, he is considered as an asylum seeker okay for a classical example nu arana yan in the previous class i have mentioned about the example of uh, edward snowden edward snowden nu arana or american citizen und and he has committed a political uh, he 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 held a different political point uh, perspective uh, against the us government adendarnu uh, arnya edward snowden was a cia contractor uh, and uh, he released certain uh, confidential documents uh, evidencing human rights violations committed by the us government in afghanistan and iraq and uh, by releasing these confidential documents he was making a political statement uh, who is making a political statement edward snowden so based because of this political statement made by edward snowden he was considered as an anti national and he uh, the american government decided to uh, 
give him, give him the capital punishment for uh, waging war against the United States. And uh, uh, Edward Snowden, uh, as you might be knowing, he sought refu refuge in Russia. Similarly, uh, there was the case of Julian Assange, a very recent case. Julian Assange uh, uh, also published confidential US government documents uh, evidencing, again, evidencing human rights violations in Russia, uh, in Iraq, uh, Afghanistan, uh, and uh, the uh, many African countries. Uh, so again, uh, similar to Edward Snowden, uh, Julian Assange was also uh, declared as anti-national and he was, uh, he, he was persecuted by the uh, US government uh, 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 and uh, the government uh, 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 government uh, said that uh, he will be given the maximum punishment uh, for disclosing the uh, classified documents. That is a capital punishment. So, in order to escape from uh, U.S. persecution, uh, the uh, the Edward Snowden, uh, sorry, uh, Julian Assange uh, sought asylum in Ecuadorian embassy in the uh, United Kingdom. Okay. Upon either can or a classical example of an asylum seeker. An asylum seeker is usually a person who is escaping from political persecutions. A, a, a persons who are hunted by uh, foreign countries or, uh, or their own countries uh, for holding a different point of view. Namada Cheguere, he is he he was a political asy asylum seeker. Che Guevara was uh, constantly hunted by the U.S. government uh, for his uh, difference in po political perspectives. Uh, th that is a classical example. Uh, so, uh, asylum seekers are those who are persecuted on political grounds. And uh, in many other countries like uh, uh, the United States uh, and uh, European countries, asylum seekers also include refugees who, who, who are awaiting uh, uh, their validation, okay, or verification. People who are uh, we, uh, awaiting uh, verification of status of their refugee status uh, uh, in, in the in the in the country of uh, country where they are seeking refuge refugee status, uh, they are also called as uh, asylum seekers. Okay. Other uh, e refugee status uh, uh, refugee in the, in the conditions satisfy and the uh, if, if a person uh, is esca escaping from his own own country or his own place of residence uh, due to the grounds I have mentioned earlier and comes to a foreign country, he has to make an application. Okay. Uh, once he has made an application, that application has to be approved by that foreign country. While awaiting for approval of that ap application uh, to declare him as a refugee, he is considered as an asylum seeker. Okay, until and unless that the person uh, is declared as a refugee, uh, he is considered as an asylum seeker under the uh, uh, Refugee Convention of 1951. Okay. That, that is the difference of difference between asylum seeker and a refugee. Okay, asylum seeker is a uh, status of a person uh, before he or she is declared as a refugee uh, after verification of, um, by uh, by the foreign country that all the conditions mentioned in Article One, capital A, close to of the uh, Refugee Convention of 1951 is satisfied. Okay, uh, once the conditions are satisfied. Uh, the application will be approved uh, his stat his or her status as an asylum seeker will change to refugee okay so it uh, sometimes it will take months sometimes it will take years for the application to be approved by the foreign country uh, so until and unless that application is approved he or she will be an asylum seeker in that country okay so uh, during the Afghan uh, Afghan war, uh, during the war against terrorism waged by the United States in Afghanistan, Iraq, and the subsequent uh, civil war in Syria, uh, there is there was a huge refugee 
um, uh, crisis uh, in the Middle East. And uh, a significant number of people were uh, fleeing from the Middle East to the European country, seeking refuge from the civil war that was happening in Syria, uh, Iraq, uh, and Afghanistan. Okay. So, as you know, that there is the case of ISIS. ISIS uh, controlled a vast territory ranging from Syria, Iraq, Iran. Uh, these three con countries together constituted the uh, territory of ISIS where uh, many uh, 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 crimes against humanity were committed against uh, religious minority groups, uh, people belonging to different religion other than the Sunni Muslims. So uh, all these people uh, fled to European countries, Western countries, seeking refugee, refugee status. Uh, and uh, since the vast number of these people came to Europe, uh, the European missionary was not uh, uh, equipped enough to process all the application. And uh, there are still many people uh, who are stranded in many asylum camps uh, you know, uh, along the border of uh, many European countries, uh, especially in Italy, Greece, where they are, they are still awaiting for the approval of their application. Okay, you may have to wait for four hour, four years, ten years, or uh, uh, months. Okay, so that is the problem with uh, the refugee convention. Uh, the uh, the processing of the application is very slow and very technical and tedious. So another one, another important convention that I would like to mention, other than uh, the uh, refugee convention of 1951, is the Organization of African Unity Convention governing uh, the specific aspect of refugee problem in Africa, 1969. Okay. So this is a particular regional convention that is drafted uh, by members of the uh, Organization of African Union uh, Unity, uh, uh, that is OAU. Uh, now it is known as the African Union. In short, it is known as the African Union, AU. Okay. So the uh, uh, members of the African Union has drafted the uh, a separate refugee convention in 1969, as you know. Africa was one of the con uh, continents which uh, which which uh, witnessed a, a series of uh, civil war uh, as well as uh, international war between countries within the African continent. So uh, the members of the African Union recognized the need for a specific uh, regional convention to protect the interest of people within the African continent who may become refugees. Uh, with, within the continent itself. Okay, so they drafted their own uh, convention, and this convention, of course, was inspired by the um, uh, Refugee Convention of 1951. And if you look at the Article One, Clause Two of the African Con uh, Refugee Convention, it says that any person compelled to leave his or her country owing to external aggression, occupation, foreign India. Uh, domination or events seriously disturbing public order in either part or whole of his country or her con uh, country, uh, a country of origin or nationality. Okay, external aggression, or aggression, or occupation, foreign occupation, any serious public disturbance. He is also a refugee. In addition to what is mentioned in uh, the uh, uh, Geneva, uh, that is the Refugee Convention of 1951, uh, uh, more clarity is given in the uh, African Convention on uh, Refugees. Okay. Fortunately, clarity. That is specific that is the difference that I just want to point out. So, uh, persecution. The, uh, the, in the 1951 convention, the word persecution is used. Uh, what constitutes a persecution is not defined within the 1951 convention. I think the persecution, the scope and the 
you can see in article 1 clause 2 of the african convention on refugees okay ada adanda parayna what constitutes a persecution it a persecution may be in the form of an external aggression occupation foreign domination or a serious public uh, disorder or disturbance okay uh, we uh, that that can be a definition given to persecution a, a more clarity is given in the african convention so that is what i was just want to point out through the regional convention a regional convention is the, the very recent and latest convention compared to the 1951 okay now moving on to the cartagena declaration on refugees okay cartagena declaration is a declaration made by the south american countries uh, okay it this was uh, concluded in mexico uh, and panama uh, in 1984 and uh, if you look at article 3 clause 3 of the uh, cartagena convention it says that persons who flee their country because of their life safety or freedom has been threatened by uh, generalized violence foreign aggression internal conflict mass uh, massive violations of human rights or other circumstances which are seriously uh, disturbed uh, disturbs uh, public order okay uh, again cartagena declaration ningal sradhikayanengil if you look very carefully at the cartagena uh, the declaration article 3 clause 3 uh, you can see that uh, the term human rights is mentioned here so again the question is what constitute a persecution uh, okay a person becomes a refugee because of a persecution based on religion race caste uh, you know uh, political ideology social uh, belonging to a social group etc but a persecution what is a persecution the grounds are given in uh, in the uh, 1951 convention but what constitutes a persecution is not clear now uh, that clarity is again we can see in the uh, cartagena uh, declaration where it is saying that uh, persecution is where the life safety freedom of a person is threatened by violence foreign aggression internal conflict okay that leads to human rights violation nowhere in the uh, uh, in the uh, con uh, refugee convention of 1951 the concept of human right is mentioned okay because human rights conventions uh, the uh, only came into existence in the 1966 in 1966 uh, the universal declaration of human rights were very uh, aware at the at the, uh, at the, at the, at as at the state at the stage of in infancy uh, uh, so this uh, refugee convention of 1951 came before the Un universal declaration of human rights and the international conventions on human rights okay upon if you look at the uh, african convention on refugees and the cartagena declaration of on refugees all these con declaration and conventions came after the international conventions on human rights so uh, they, they are also influenced by the aspect of human rights and in the cartagena declaration the uh the scope of human rights violations constituting uh, 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 or creating the status of refugee is also mentioned okay so uh, e cartagena declaration uh, the african union uh, convention on refugees in, you have to read it together to understand what constitutes a persecution because persecution is not defined uh, persecution of a person is not defined under the uh, refugee convention of 1951 and you have to understand the scope of persecution by reading into the african convention on refugees as well as the cartagena declaration okay now moving on e nammade uh, e refugee convention this refugee conventions uh, at the international level as well as the, the regional level they are uh, they are created in order to prevent one thing okay and that is the principle of non uh, refoulement uh, refoulement okay non refoulement and what is it saying the principle of non refoulement uh, is again and again asked in the udc uh, question paper okay uh, so what what is a refoulement uh, uh, this it refoulement is a french term okay 
uh, it, that is a French word, uh, and uh, it is translated in English as forcing a person to return. That is the English translation of the French word a refoulement. Okay, so uh, what is a refoulement? What is the principle of no uh, refoulement? What does it mean? If you look into Article Thirty Three, Clause One of the Refugee Convention of Nineteen Fifty One. it says that no contracting states uh, that is uh, countries who are party to the refugee convention of 1951 they shall not expel or return okay any refugee in any manner whatsoever to the frontiers of territories where his or her life or freedom would be threatened on account of his race religion nationality membership of a particular social group or political opinion okay ada yeah the countries who are party to the 1951 convention uh, uh, that is uh, no country who are party to the 1951 convention shall force any individual who is a refugee to go back to any part of the world where his or her li uh, life freedom uh, uh, will be threatened on account of his or her race religion nationality membership or a particular social group or political opinion okay yeah a particular social group and or uddeshikana uh, endana a, a classical example would be belonging to uh, the uh, lgbtq community if you are belonging to an lgbtq community it is a death sentence in many countries okay so that is what you what is meant by a political uh, uh, that, that is what is meant by belonging to a particular social group okay belonging to a lgbtq community is uh, an example of belonging to a social group now political opinion i have already mentioned uh, you know in if you go back to north korea okay be uh, belonging to a capitalist country uh it is a death sentence in north korea supporting uh, capitalism is a death sentence in north korea okay because north korea is a uh, communist country okay same goes for cuba uh same goes for china if you speak against the chinese communist party you will uh, it, 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 it it will amount to a death, death sentence if you speak against the communist party in cuba it again uh, amounts to a death sentence okay you can speak against the bjp you can speak against the congress you can speak against the communist party in india because india is a democratic democratic country criticizing a, a political party or having a different political opinion it will not cause you any harm in india or in united states or in uk so uh, it is not the same in many other countries so a person can also become uh, a, a person may suffer a threat to his or her life because of a political opinion or a belonging to a social group or belonging to a particular nationality or belonging to a particular religion race etc so uh, you, you it is not necessary that you are uh, forcing a person to go back to his own country you can force that uh, force a particular person to go back to any other part of the world but if you uh, force him to go his him or her to go back to any other part of the world where he or she will be persecuted on the basis of her uh, race uh, religion uh, or nationality or uh, belonging to a social group or uh, having a political opinion uh, you you cannot uh, force that particular person to uh, leave okay a classical example is taslima nasri okay Taslima Nasri was a Benga Bengali uh, writer, uh, uh, fictional writer, uh, and she was uh, per persecuted for uh, having a uh, religious as well as political opinion uh, against Islam. Okay, so she was she was fearing for her life within Bangladesh, and she had to leave Bangladesh to other foreign countries. Initially, she came to India. where in again in, in india she also faced the same problem and the indian government have were forced to arrange uh, uh, her refugee status in many uh, other foreign countries okay where she will be felt safe okay 
So uh, India was not in a position to force her to go back to Bangladesh. What the Indian government did was, Indian government in uh, in collaboration with uh, foreign other foreign countries like Switzerland, UK, uh, made arrangements for Taslima Nasri to seek refugee status in uh, Norway, in the Scandinavian countries. So uh, uh, forcing a particular person to go go back to another territory where he or she will be safe, that is okay. But you cannot force Taslima Nasri to go back to Pakistan. You cannot force uh, Taslima Nasri to go back to Afghanistan. You cannot force Taslima Nasri to go back to any uh, country where the uh, state religion is Islam. Because she has a political opinion as well as a religious perspective which is against the religion of Islam. And uh, she may be uh, harmed, uh, her, 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 she will be harmed uh, if she go, goes back to any country uh, who's, who, who, uh, who has a state religion uh, that is uh, uh, Islam. Okay, so you cannot force any person to go back to any territory where he or she will be threatened. Okay, that is the principle of non refoulement you cannot force a refugee to go back to uh, the place where he or she will be felt threatened. Okay. So that is given in Article 33, Close 1. That is the basic principle, uh, that, that, that is the basic objective of the Refugee Convention of 1951 and other regional conventions. Now, uh, there is an exception to the principle of non refoulement and that is if there is a reasonable ground for uh, regarding uh, him or her as a danger to the security of the country, where he or she is a term, uh, he, he, where he or she is present, or if having uh, been convicted of a particular serious crime, the refugee uh, constitutes a danger to the community. Okay. So, in other words, uh, if a particular person who has been granted the refugee status is a threat to national security, imagine a situation where he becomes or he or she becomes subsequently becomes a threat to national security. Uh, the status of a, that individual as a refugee may be revoked. Okay, uh, if uh, the presence of that individual causes uh, public disorder uh, or he he or she commits a grievous crime. Uh, uh, his or her uh, status as a refugee may be revoked by the host country. Okay, that is uh, that is a classical example of uh, uh, that's a classical example in France. Uh, again, I am really sorry. Uh, all the illustrations uh, that came to my mind is with regard to a particular religious community. Uh, in uh, in France, there was a uh, faculty a teacher who was uh, decapitated by a young man who came from Syria. He was a refugee who, uh, who came uh, to France from Syria and uh, he deca decapitated the fr uh, French citizen who was a faculty in a school, French school, for speaking against uh, Islam, uh, for uh, depicting uh, Prophet uh, Nabi in a negative uh, picture. So uh, then and there he has committed a crime. Okay, he has committed uh, a terrorist activity and for committing such a terrorist activity, his uh, refugee status may be revoked by the French government. That is what uh, is given in Article 33, Clause 2 of the Refugee Convention, 1951. So, uh, the, the principle of non refoulement is not absolute. There are exceptions. But, uh, you know, uh, revoking the refugee status of a particular individual does not uh, dissolve the human rights obligation of a particular state. Okay, imagine uh, the 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 uh, particular refugee who became a terrorist is captured by the state. Uh, his or her uh, human rights with regard to due process of law, uh, the right to be heard, all these aspects uh, has to be preserved by the host country. Even if uh, that particular person has committed a ter terrorist activity. Uh, it does not mean that that particular person does not have human rights, basic human rights. All the basic human rights enjoyed by everyone across the world should also be granted to that particular person while he is uh, uh, going under trial for, for committing terrorist activities. 
so uh, that is the exception to the principle of non refoulement now in the next class i am hoping that i will be able to discuss with you other conventions protecting the interest of refugees okay there are few conventions which overlap with the uh, 1951 convention which tries to complement the 1951 convention on refugees and these conventions include conventions against torture and other cruel inhumane or uh, de uh, degrading treatment or punishment uh, 1984 convention on the rights of children uh, 1989 which uh, provides uh, special specific protection to uh, children who are refugees international convention on elimination of all forms of racial discrimination it is also complementing the refugee convention of 1951 as i have mentioned a person may become a refugee because of his race okay then there is the international convention on civil and political rights international convention on economic social and cultural rights which also complements the refugee convention of 1951 uh the, there is the convention on elimination of all forms of discrimination against women as you know uh, uh refugees majority a uh, lion share of refugees are women and children okay uh, the uh the sido uh, is a very important convention which complements the refugee convention of 1951 and finally there is the convention of uh, right of persons with a disability 2006 as you know many refugees may be fleeing from civil war may, may be fleeing from uh, riots uh, religious persecution may be fleeing from international war and uh, they may be losing a limb uh, uh, you know uh, they may be uh, may not be having any uh, leg or arm or eyes they 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 may, may be suffering some from some sort of disability uh, uh, many of the refugees may be suffering from some type of disability whether it is a physical disability or a mental disability it varies so uh, the convention on persons with with a disability uh, 2006 also complements to a certain extent the provisions of the uh, refugee convention of 1951 so all these conventions has to be read read to read with the uh, refugee Conve uh, Re refugee convention of 1951 in order to understand the uh, full scope of in uh, protection that is given to refugees as well as asylum seekers under international law because uh, you know uh, the uh, refugee convention of 1951 it is not regularly uh, updated what happens is all the latest developments are incorporated into the 1951 convention by re reading the 1951 convention uh, in association in association with other conventions okay in uh, you know that 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 is what we do um, in domestic legislations when you are interpreting uh, you know uh, uh, specific provisions with regard to uh, financial fraud that may be committed under the uh, companies act you have to read the companies act with the indian penal code when uh, whenever we are uh, analyzing any cyber crime uh you have to read the cyber uh, information technology act with the, in conjunction with the indian penal code okay so similarly uh, when it comes to international refugee conventions you also have to read the international in, uh, refugee convention along with all these uh, international conventions that i have mentioned here and in the next class i am hoping to mention the specific provisions that you have to give a uh, focus in all these conventions one by one okay so we have uh, we don't have enough time right now to go through all these conventions one by one next class i we will be going through all these conventions uh, important provisions of all these conventions which support uh, which complements uh, the refugee convention of 1951 okay so is there, if there is any questions from uh, the students i will be entertaining those questions otherwise we can wind up if anybody have any doubt please ask him sir i think nobody okay. have any doubt yes i think so, so. Uh, principle of okay principle padich vecha ga okay principle of fulfillment is very important 
okay thank you. Let's, thank you. let's wind up this session and thank you sir thank you for your valuable and worthful session and thank you all the participants for your impression listening and thank you all okay let's discuss the class sir thank you thank you sir